Oh, I don't even know. I could go in. <laughs> I feel like people can know who it is. I'm not trying to name names. Your favorite people you watch probably. Did, I, did you know I'm allergic to peanut butter, but I eat PBJs all the time? All right, guys. So. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jade. Today we're doing a Dunkin' Donuts mukbang. I'm here with Clara, Jared, and we have a special day today. I just landed in Boston this morning, and the first thing I've heard was your guys' donuts were okay. <laughs> okay, Jared's a local from here. Yeah. Um, tell us what we got. We got strawberry frosted, vanilla frosted, chocolate glazed, glazed jelly, and another vanilla frosted. And I didn't think it would have been fun if we don't talk about some, you know, drama, some beef. I feel like as creators, Jared is a videographer. What type of content do you make on YouTube? Vlogs, cinematic, stuff like that. And Clara? I'm an actress from Brazil. Clara's been a huge major team helper at PBJ. You guys know, which is like the startup I've been building for the past year. Um, and Jared's been helping us film for today's event, and we're gonna go into it. But the problem is, as creators, I feel like the more ambitious you are the lonelier you get I feel like because everyone in this industry is very very competitive and not in the healthiest way so I thought every time we take a donut bite we tell a story of some something that happened that's kind of shitty everyone pick a donut is she gonna do out get a donut I don't eat oh, oh yeah she's <laughs> vegan oh my gosh she's vegan it's awkward did you want to take a bite what <laughs> okay let's try it oh, it's so good this is a two out of ten for me Okay, so I'm gonna start with my story time. Can I start with, I, can't, I don't know if I can say a lot of it, because I don't know if I should put names in here, but. Oh, I don't even know, I could go in. <laughs> I feel like people can know who it is. There's a lot of people in the space of entrepreneurship that really run over their closest friends and employees. And I'm literally telling you, like, I'm not trying to name names. Your favorite people you watch, probably. And you probably know this, because you're, as a videographer, Jared, like, you have you been run over before? Yeah, I've Okay, I have a story time, I don't, I think I can say a lot, but every single one of my past editors has told me at some point that they've been like literally taking advantage of their last boss, they're not getting paid on time, and this it's fine. Like I understand if you know money's a struggle, but the problem I have is these people are the ones that proclaim that they are self-proclaimed millionaires. And the fact that they don't play their employees and mistreat them right is so frustrating to me. Because I grew up in a place where I didn't come from a lot of money. And it's just frustrating because I guess the editors or people who make videos, they don't really speak up about it because you really can't. Maybe, do you have anything to pick up on that? I worked for a YouTuber, not gonna name names, for like six months, made a lot of really cool videos, and never got paid. How many hours would you edit the video? Like, what was it like? I would put in like 12 to 16 hours per video. It was like heavy editing on videos. And I'd send it over, it would either get rejected or I'd be asked to critique things. Go back, I'd re-edit it, send it, never got paid. Wait, wait, before we, wait, before we start though. <laughs> I'm gonna try a jelly donut because P, B, and J. <laughs> did, I, did you know I'm allergic to peanut butter but I eat PBJs all the time? <laughs> was it like in New York for acting? Like, do you get, is there anyone that mistreats you, you would say? Most of the things I know are not my own experience, but like friends that have told me about this kind of things. A lot of theaters don't pay their actors. So like you have a contract that you're gonna be involved in like XYZ productions, but you never get paid for it. They were never promised that they would get paid, but like they pay everybody oh. in the theater, just not the actors. What? What? Yeah, what is this? I like literally every industry has this acting industry videography. Oh, actually, I have people that, like, I did. I was like doing marketing for, and they never paid me. <laughs> you doing marketing? I, oh yeah, that? like businesses. Yeah, businesses. That's like corruption. Yeah, yeah I know. Too. I could, but at the time I wasn't old enough. I, I'm not legal. Like I yeah. <laughs> between you and YouTubers, or like you and other actors, is it competitive or are you guys friendly? Honestly, at the end of the day, like let's be honest, like I'm really competitive at heart, but like at the same time, like some people are just so ruthless. Right. Have you had that before? Like. Yeah, so a lot of people that I work with, if, it, if they're in my really close group, then most of them will be like really not judgmental, but like kind and like competitive in a good way. But once you reach out, kind of like past your comfort zone and reach out to people that you have never met before, you don't really know, it starts to get competitive and they start to kind of like try to use you for something and not return the favor and things along that line. Not to be shady, so many people out there, I know you're watching this. <laughs> I'm like roasting everyone. I don't, I don't mean this on condescending at all. But when I was first at 10,000 subscribers, or like a lot smaller, there's this one person that like didn't want to meet me at all. Like I just like, because I think part of networking is not always like collaborating, but just like, hey, let's eat food and talk, and not always work. Never want to talk to me, this dude is also in the same niche as I am. Never want to talk to me. The minute I kind of surpassed him in following, he was like, 
hello. <laughs> I see your school friends give a crap about what you do. Not really. No, I'm out of school. Oh. So like people see me like traveling or like talking about some project I'm Im involved with. They're like, oh, cool. Can they talk here? Um, a little bit. Yeah. I feel like especially in the beginning and like yeah, no. in the creative industry in general, because you're like, you, what you do a lot, people kind of take advantage of that and they don't expect you to like charge them as much. Oh, let's talk about that charging. Is it, not, is it awkward to charge people money for things or? A little bit. Yeah. I'm more client based business, you're probably client based sometimes. For that's acting, like, is it awkward? But with acting, that's why you get an agent. Oh, like okay. you're not supposed to talk about money with anyone else other than your agent. Literally the first time I made Clara, I don't know what was going through my head. This is how fucked up Jane's brain is. I, she says like, Jane, what was it? Clara was like, Jane, I'm vegan. And I literally just told her, I think a year ago, I told my friend that was vegan for, and he's a vegan for three years and he ate chicken. And then I felt really awkward because I was like, why did I say that? What would you rate that donut out of 10 stars? Five, Five out of 10 stars. That's not good. <laughs> what about you? Uh, the hash browns, that one. I would say like eight out of 10. The jelly donut is like 10 out of 10. But everything else is like, Meh. We're actually headed to an event called Info Expo. As we're complaining and yelling about everyone that's messed up in the industry, I just think that that's not, that's making a generalization that's way too far. There's some amazing friends I've met. Um, and I wanna show you guys the power of finding the right people. I'm not talking about everyone. There's so many, like you, you have good friends? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of good people. You made good friends? Yeah. These guys are cool friends. So I, I'm making this video not to say like I hate everyone, but I'm just saying like, just beware. Because now we're gonna show you guys some amazing influencers that I know that are awesome and down to earth. And let's go to see what happened. Let's go. I really told you how I grew my channel, I think it would maybe be the same thing you guys would be, which is two things for me. And I, this, this is gonna make you throw up because it's every single advice, you probably hear it for everything. Um, the first thing was staying consistent. But the second thing actually was finding, like if you have magic a Venn diagram, this first circle is content you like, and then the second one is content people actually care about, and finding that middle. I never knew that middle. I only made people, you know, I made content that I like, but no one really gave a crap about it. So. Finding kind of that center point while being consistent is what grows, but I think that's almost common advice. There's no secret, really. The only thing that's ultimately going to help is if you truly enjoy what you're doing and you do it a lot. What if, let's say, my Instagram account isn't growing fast as fast as my friends? I would say if you base your success upon an Emma Chamberlain, an Elon Musk, or these people that you have to understand that if we go back to our first question we went today, which is how do we grow, there's a little bit that is luck. And I can't lie and say like, yeah, it's hard work, but a lot of it is timing. So if you base your success based on luck and pure lottery, you're not gonna ever find, it's not mathematical in a sense. So um, you can always grow on your algorithm, maximize on again, like profile visits, but comparing yourself is always a dead end because there is luck involved. And any business always has luck. For the longest time, I was like, I don't know my niche. I'm not, I'm not a beauty influencer. I'm not a marketing major. I also like eating food. I think the problem with putting a niche in the beginning is it limits your creativity. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to have a business. You have to be algorithmic. So I recommend Seth Godin, who is an author, a marketing author. Mm -hmm. He says, build the smallest audience possible. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? It kind of goes back to the thing. Word of mouth marketing or vi virality is only spread through small groups. So find the most niche, like smallest type of group. I only make videos for 17 to 18 year olds who struggle with IBS because I have a digestive issue. Focus on that. Once you figure that out, then you can expand. When you're working in a field that's as creative as YouTube and Instagram and you're posting pictures and you have to do editing, I feel like it's um, easy to kind of fall into a rut sometimes because creativity it's kind of sometimes not sustainable. How do you get to that point and still 
have the audience kind of like not even know what's going on like just stay consistent do that to be very frank like I think it's okay, you need to have those up and down because that's when you have those creative moments. But really tactical approach, you watch YouTube still, right? So go on your recommended feed, those like weird videos you get recommended. Watch that video and see what you can do better. Like, oh, I can make this story pop better. Then you get ideas from there. Just kind of not having to reinvent the wheel, but build on top of another idea. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm currently finishing up this video and letting you know that I'm in London. But I hope you enjoyed the Boston meetup. It was so fun to meet you guys. Shout out to the car winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you like this video, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and comment. You know, let me know. Let me think. Let me know a story time of like a horror story you had with a YouTuber you didn't like. Maybe you met a YouTuber. Maybe you met me and you didn't like me. <laughs> I'll get you guys in the next one. I'll see you guys actually. We're flying to Munich right now. And then I'll see you in Paris. So yeah, let me know what cities I should have next. That's actually something else you should comment. Uh, post notifications on. Super fun things coming in the future, you guys. And I love you. I'm actually here with Brennan and Zach. And hi. Uh, uh. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Guys. See you guys. Depending on when this video is up, I'll link below our collab in the description box or on Zach's channel. We made pancakes and smoothie bowls, so I'll link that below since you know I'm a chef myself. Catch you guys in the next one. Ooh.